Hey Crystal Maiden here, and here I'm going to be showing off all of the test rooms. There's three parts of this, unfortunately. I wish I could have fit them all in one video. Ah well. But you need to use action replay codes to activate these. It would have been a really cool easter egg if you could just go into these test rooms by holding certain buttons on the file screen. Like, without having to use codes. Like, I think that would have been pretty cool, but instead you have to use an action replay. Which is yet another reason that I don't like the HD version, because you can't do that on the HD version. There is no action replay for the Wii U. I guess I'd have to use a homebrew channel, but I don't know how to set that up. They, like, Nintendo stopped supporting the Wii U, so I guess it could get away with it, but I don't know. But yeah, the test rooms are basically things that the game developer made to test out certain things. Like, this is probably testing out the rain effect and failing horribly at it. Like, the screen is entirely white right now. I can't see where I am. Maybe it's testing out the snowing effect of... of the ice island. I was about to say ice cap twice. So as much of a Sonic fan I am. Like, ice ring island, that's it. But yeah, there's not really that much to talk about when it comes to the test rooms. Like, I show them off. They kind of speak for themselves. I really wish that I got into these test rooms with at least one decoration item. Because I would have loved to, like, show off what happens if you put something in there. Like, with the game freeze. I don't know. Something cool about these test rooms, like, one of the things I can talk about before moving on to trivia. One is the ice physics there that was stupid and annoying. Another thing is that... The water seems to have actual currents, which would have made swimming in this game a lot more annoying, so I'm glad that they didn't have that. And the really interesting thing is that the water is clear! Look at how beautiful the water looks! Why couldn't the water in the rest of the game be like this? You can actually see Link's swimming animation! Like, when he's in the water, like you can see his arms moving around. That is so cool! I kind of think that well, I kind of take it back. I think the water in this game looks good. Like, like Super Mario Sunshine had the best looking water, like, ever. And it was on the GameCube, too. And it was just, like, released a bit later. So that has better looking water than this game. Probably because of this game having a cell shade or so. But yeah, I'm mostly going to be using the footage of this test room to talk about like, speedrunning glitches that I learned from Swordless Link's playthrough of the game, because most of this footage just speaks for itself. Yep. Like, aside from dealing, like, boring blow-by-blow -blow commentary, yep. like, here's what's happening on screen, though. Like, isn't that interesting? Nah, I think this will be a lot more interesting. So, in the room before the rooftop with the mobile in for taking Fortress, if you put it on the barrel, and then take it off right away, you will still be invisible to the Moblins. Although, you'll have to hide behind a wall if a Moblin detects you and the, the startling noise plays where he looks at you. So I guess he can still hear you. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. Like, you could just take it, you could just put the barrel on in one room, take it off, and then just keep running around. One of the things that's frustrating about the Forsaken Fortress is that it feels like a tutorial for something that you never need to use. Because you need to use stealth, like, one more time in the entire game to get an empty bottle. But it turns out that you don't even need to use stealth in the first place to get it, as I'm going to proudly demonstrate in an extra part later. So, why is the very first session in the game... Why is it based around stealth, when you don't really need to use that obnoxious mechanic ever again? At least with the uh, Gerudo's Fortress in Ocarina of Time, they had the good sense to put that in a later dungeon, because they knew that it would suck. Rather than making a lot of people rage quit the game right then and there, because it didn't start. But yeah, like, the, the game came out of... The, the game came out around the time that video games in general were having this huge stealth craze. Because Metal Gear Solid was really popular at the time. So, game developers were like, uh, well, Metal Gear Solid is popular. So let's make every video game have an annoying stealth section that sucks. That'll make it popular. Like with Metal Gear Solid, I've heard that you can, like, do all sorts of stuff, like... 
like make the enemies fall asleep and like defeat them like that's the thing you can actually defeat the enemies you don't always have to have stealth with with link it's just something boring that waiting around in barrels oh yeah here's Link being crushed so that's pretty funny although also kind of startling and scary when it happens to you especially as a kid Obviously, this test room is to test out the swinging mechanic. It really doesn't work when you grapple onto the the things that are hovering in the air. Like, it seems very unfinished there. That's weird, because, like, the test rooms can't... Sometimes the test rooms themselves feel unfinished. Even though the mechanics themselves were finished in the actual level design of the game. Like, see? You're so close to it here. You're, you're diagonal instead of directly below it, and you can't hang down. When you first get to Dragon Roost Island, you can actually skip the cutscene you see when you get the Wind Direction song. Hang off a ledge and use the Wind Waker at the right time while falling, and you'll be in the Wind Waker conducting animation without actually seeing the notes. This is called the storage glitch. Talk to the boat, and you'll store his text. Basically, he'll, he'll make the you talk to something sound, but he won't actually talk to you. This is called storing the text, and you can then do something else regarding the button to make that text appear later. Talk to the broken tablet after storing his text, and then use the Wind Waker to learn the song. You'll see empty Wind Waker notes that you can get rid of by just walking around. But like that, that's pretty cool, like you just skip the the wind song cutscene with the with the frog. And if you climb onto a rock below the first mailbox, you can actually jump off and hang onto a ledge to get up to the cutscene like pretty easily. I mean the cutscene where the where the flying root the riddle talks to you. That one. So you can basically skip most of the traveling through the dragon roost to get to the first dungeon. And there's also a pretty cool glitch called Super Swim. Basically, again, you you stand on a ledge and then you press the Windmaker button at the right time so that you fall off the ledge at the same time that you're conducting. And if you do it right, you'll have the camera locked so that so that Link his face is being visible. So if you get into the water that way, then you'll be able to jump into the water with the, the camera facing Link. And you can then super swim by making the camera always in front of Link and alternating directions in the water while rotating the camera. This will build up lots of speed. And wherever the back of your arrow is on the minimap for the C chart is where you're going to shoot towards after you spend a whole bunch of time rotating while super swimming. So the super swim is actually pretty cool glitch that's essential for all the speed runs of the game because it basically means that it's unnecessary to sail. So most of the sailing in the game is completely skippable. Like you can just, like the thing about the super swimming is it can be unreliable because it's kind of a crapshoot whether you go the, the direction you go and sometimes, sometimes you spend such a long time in the water that you end up like drowning because of the air meter. The air meter is an obnoxious time limit when you're super swimming. But it's still pretty cool when it actually works out for you, which is often actually, like if you know what to do. That previous test room was annoying because it only gave me a green rupee, and yet it had me have to skip in the editing an obnoxious chest opening animation every single time. I guess this NPC is just trapped in a stasis. That's weird. This is probably a testing out talking to NPCs room. Basically, like, again with super swimming, you have to know where the island you're backwards super swimming towards exactly is, like, on the Great Sea chart. Especially at the beginning of the game where you don't have the entire Great Sea chart filled out. So it's not like you can see on the chart exactly where in the squares of the map the islands are. But that also, it, all, it helps because you can still look at the camera and, like, if you see that you're super swimming backwards towards an island in the distance, 
then you'll be able to know that you're sailing towards it, so that's good. Well, not sailing, but... Like, it's annoying, like, the, the controls are inverted when the camera's in front of you like that. And the camera's always in front of you when you're like that, so... Yeah. Anyways. Using the Super Swim glitch, you can actually get yourself to Greatfish Island before even getting the Dense Pearl. When you, the thing is that when you're super swimming towards the Great Fish Island, you need to make sure that you're mashing the sail button so that you pull it out right when you get to the island's loading zone, standing on it. You need to pull out the sail because otherwise, the game will softlock from you getting to the island before it has the time to load. The game will softlock if you get to the point in that cutscene where, where Link does an angry expression if you're in the water at that time. Because Link is supposed to be swimming at the moment. This is a pretty cool auction. Well, I say cool, kind of sarcastically, because it's basically like painfully mashing the A button. And I basically like to just cheat by just betting the maximum amount of money that I possibly can, so I guarantee that I win. The game throws so much money at you, but as I'm showing right now, that it's kind of, like it's, it's perfectly fine to just cheat at the auction. I think you're supposed to bid 10% higher and that's the legitimate strategy, but fuck legitimacy. I just want the items. So it's annoying that they give you a random amount of items. Like, they don't give you the piece of, the piece of heart on the first try every time. I'll just quickly explain what I was about to say, but... Like, the game's gonna softlock if you, if you don't press the sail button so that you pull it out when you're standing up. When you super swim over to Greatfish Island before it has a chance to load. You need to give the game time to load it. And the, the time that it'll spend loading it will be spent with Link holding the sail above his head. But yeah, this is the... This is my completed save file with the second quest. Where Link's in his pajamas the whole time and... And Ariel has a cool red skull dress right from the start. And here I'm showing off the Nintendo Gallery. And the empty Wind Waker icons will, will be on screen the whole time. Because you just came out of the storage glitch. Basically, you can get to Greatfish Island and activate the curse that makes the night stormy before even getting the first pearl, which is pretty cool. So, just like in Link to the Past, you can get all of the pearls in any order you want. But yeah, the thing about the Nintendo Gallery is that, like, it's basically you take a picture of something, and if it's exactly right, like, it's not too zoomed in or too far away. Too far away is a real kicker there. If it's exactly right, and the picture isn't in black and white, then Karlov will make you a trophy based on that thing you took a picture of. It's an extremely obnoxious side quest. Like, like the second quest starts you out with the deluxe pixel box right from the beginning. So that makes it actually possible to beat this quest because you need to be able to take a picture of Ariel to complete it, but you don't get to take, take a picture of Ariel in the first quest. So that's bad design. Like, they just had to arbitrarily, like, they just had to patch in making, like, it's, it's stupid. Just completing this quest is stupid. It's so frustrating, like, this is why I don't count this as 100% completion. Like, there's so much they have to take a picture of. So what do you get for getting every trophy in the game? Nothing. Nothing at all. Not even kidding. Well, technically, getting every trophy gets you a uh, trophy of Link Sailing. But whatever. Also, why did that giant pig trophy show a color giant pig that we never actually see? Like, is that a beta thing? Like, did they not originally plan to have the giant pig be black? That is weird. Also, I don't really remember getting her a black pig, I thought I just got her... I don't know. I'm... No, I don't think the giant pig ate the other pigs. I think the the owners of the pig ate the other pigs. But anyways, there's a Zelda 1 sprite of an Octorok on Manny's bag. Manny being the guy who walks around this place who isn't Karlov. And behind the sculptor's desk, you can see the bunny mask, all night mask, Goron mask, and Keaton mask from Majora's Mask. There's also Chatu Romani on a shelf. Chatu Romani being the cool thing where you have infinite magic until 
until you have to save and play the song of time, and completely destroy all of your progress and force you to just start the game over again. Well, I'm exaggerating, but seriously. That's why I don't like Majora's Mask. Because of the constant pressure of a time limit in a, by definition, slow-paced, exploration-based game. Like, I don't know. The game's all about side quests, but all the side quests get completely undone if you save your game. Because you have to restart everything from the beginning. Like, like bosses, the masks you get from the bosses still, like, show up. You keep your items, but you lose your rupees and just feels like nothing ever get, nothing ever stays accomplished in that game. It's, it's, it's like nihilism the game. 